the course of the New Testament, um, the word in Christ is used over 270 times. That phrase. Christ living in us is used just 70. Where's our focus usually as believers? That Christ lives in us. A great truth, right? Christ's throne is in our hearts. But Paul's emphasis, the emphasis of the New Testament, is where we are in him. Okay? That's the emphasis. And it's kind of like this. It, let's pretend this is us. Let's pretend this is, um, or sorry, let's pretend this is Jesus. And this is heaven. And this is us. Okay? I want you just to think about describing their qualities. Okay? Let's describe Jesus for a minute. If we were to describe this thermos, for instance, we would say, okay, it's turquoise, cylindrical, silver, okay, long, tall. It has its own set of qualities. Whereas when we, we're made in Christ's image, so we're going to have some of those qualities. You can see how they're, they're similar shape, okay, but this one's glass. This one's kind of molded. It's not turquoise. It's clear. It's filled. It's not empty, okay? So, if we say that these have two different qualities, right? If we were to describe Jesus, we'd call him patient, loving, and kind. If we were to describe us, we'd probably say the exact opposite, right? We tend to be worried and stressed out, unpatient, unkind, unfeeling towards others. That tends to be our natural state. Well, when Jesus saves us, he literally just doesn't say that he comes into our hearts. He emphasizes the fact that we go into his. And when he pours us into him, we now take on the very shape of that thermos as I overfill it and spill on myself. Amazing, huh? Okay, we now take on the character of him. Don't read into the analogy of me drinking that, okay? But now if I were to say, describe, describe yourself. Let's just say I poured it into here and I'll say, describe yourself. You'd have to say turquoise, silver, you know, tall. You now take on the same attributes as the thing you're in. The same thing is with the Father and how he sees Jesus. He sees Jesus and when he sees us, he sees Christ. And so he doesn't see unpatient and unkind and unloving and unfaithful and joyless and what all those things we tend to say, God, make me more of this, make me more of this. He sees that knowing Christ, we're complete. Paul said, I strive I'm still in, I still feel like I'm impatient. I still feel like I'm unloving. But in Christ, I strive towards what I have already attained. Theologians call it positional holiness, practical holiness. There's a way in which those two talk. Okay? Some theologians want to be all up here, some all the way down here. There's absolutely a balance in the scripture. How we live out of those is going to determine how we live. Colossians 3 says, set your minds not on this journey, set your minds on things above where you're seated in Christ. So if you know you know where you sit, you'll start to manifest the effects, the character of Jesus. Just like I sat in that prison with those, the hope of all those people saved, all those prisoners, and I started to manifest that moment. The same way when I first went in, I sat down when they were unsaved and sharing all their stories of murder and rape, and I felt the weight of that and the depression and the evil, same way that manifested kind of a, a struggle in me all the same, okay? Whether that be positive or negative. So it really boils down to if you focus on where you're seated in Christ, you'll look like Jesus. You forget where you're seated in Christ, you won't look like Jesus, it really is that simple because you manifest the spirit of what you're in. Think about business. If you're in business, it tends to bring in things you manifest. It tends to manifest out of you stress. It tends to man manifest out of you worry. It tends to manifest out of you anxiety. Think about the family that you picture yourself in. It might, it might manifest in you feelings of security. It might manifest in you feelings of control or discontent. Okay? And really what it results in is if we put our, if we sit down in anything but what we truly are in Jesus, it will result in us putting on a mask. Masks are what are going to become our reality if we don't see ourselves sitting perfect. Because if we don't find a perfect thing to sit in, we're always going to recognize there's something not right with us. And there's not a religion on earth that does not agree that something's wrong with us. Something is trying to be avoided. And so there's always some kind of escape route. Jesus 
What fascinated me when I was an atheist and when he um, saved me at the age of 18 was that he was the only one that claimed to never have a mask. He was the only one that claimed perfection from the beginning and people believed he was perfect even when he died, even when he rose, even when he ascended and continued to share the gospel and the good news of that even up till today. And that is what fascinated me. No one has ever made that claim. 